Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about the worst pirate ever. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. <laughs> no, not Jack Sparrow. A real life pirate. But believe it or not, Jack Sparrow is loosely based off of our guy, Stead Bonnet. This thing was on, wasn't it? I hope so. Everybody knows Captain Jack Sparrow, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, Jack isn't totally based off of Stead Bonnet, but he is somewhat. Jack is a little bit of Stead and Blackbeard and a couple of others mixed in for good effect. But he is mostly based off of our guy, Stead Bonnet, the gentleman pirate. Probably the worst pirate in history. Pirates were welcomed in Charlestown Harbor during the colony's early years. For the colonists, pirates provided protection and profit. As long as they raided Spanish ships, it was reduced the chances that Spain would attack the colony. When these seagoing thieves came ashore, they always paid for their supplies with Spanish gold and silver and sold their booty below its value. It was a wonderful arrangement for the profit-seeking colonists, but this relationship did not last long. Eventually, the proprietors and the crown began to frown on this illegal business when it threatened English in interest. A law was passed to authorize trials for pirates in the colonies or at sea instead of bringing them all the way to London. Uneducated and unemployed seamen often found their way to a pirate ship's crew, but one Barbadian named Stead Bonnet was an unlikely candidate for this profession. Born in 1688, Bonnet's family owned a plantation three miles east of Bridgetown, Barbados. Shortly after his birth, Bonnet and his two sisters were orphaned when their father and mother died. Bonnet inherited the plantation. Guardians saw to it that he was educated and raised to be a gentleman. At the age of 21, Bonnet married Mary Allenby in 1709, who was the daughter of a planter. The newlyweds lived in Bridgetown where their family grew to three sons and a daughter. Bonnet's status also grew as a landowner and became a major in the island's militia. After establishing himself as an upright member of society, he was made a justice of the peace in January 1716. A year later, Major Bonnet informed his friends and family that he was leaving Barbados. On March 25th, 1718, he prepared the legal papers that allowed his wife and two friends to conduct his affairs while he was away. Bonnet had a secret plan. Without the knowledge of family and friends, he bought a sloop, named her the Revenge, and armed it with 10 guns and hired a 70-man crew. He was giving up the gentleman's life to become a pirate. Bonnet had no experience as a captain of a pirate ship. Because he was not a seaman, he had to trust the experiences of his crew. Nevertheless, on its maiden voyage to plunder the revenge proved worthy. 
Off the Virginia and Charlestown coast, Bonnet captured several vessels. At least two of them came from the Barbados and he burned them to prevent word of his involvement from reaching home. Bonnet later assumed the name Captain Edwards while in the Caribbean. His course crossed paths with Queen Anne's Revenge, captained by Edward Teach, the notorious and ruthless Blackbeard. They formed an alliance and hijacked ships in the West Indies, and it did not take Teach long to realize that Bonet was greener than a rookie seaman. He cleverly lured him into giving up the command of the Revenge in exchange for quarters on the Queen Anne's Revenge, where he would not be bothered with the demands of, you know, commanding a ship and a crew. Teach, in turn, placed one of his trusted men in charge of Bonet's ship. They set sail for the Bay of Honduras and later the Grand Cayman Island. During the voyage, Teach was able to expand the fleet to five ships that were used in May of 1718, blockade uh, of Charlestown. For a week, Teach sees ships as they entered and left the harbor. One of the captured ships carried a VIP passenger, Samuel Ragg, a member of the Provincial Grand Council who was bound for London. After threatening to kill Ragg and the hostages, Teach was able to convince Governor Robert Johnson to exchange them for medical supplies. Blackbeard's plans were contrary to the adage that there is honor among thieves. He was laying a plot to cheat Bonnet by running the valuables the pirate fleet had stolen and sharing it with only a few close comrades. While off the coast of North Carolina, Blackbeard returned Bonet to the command of the Revenge and falsely announced he planned to seek a royal amnesty that was offered to pirates. Bonet decided to do the same and he did so, but Blackbeard did not. After receiving amnesty, Bonet returned to the inlet where the Revenge was anchored, but Blackbeard was gone with the loot. Bonet and his crew searched for him and failed to find Blackbeard. Although he had just received a royal pardon, Bonet soon returned to his old pirate ways of the coast, off the coast of Virginia. To conceal his identity, he assumed the name Captain Thomas and changed the name of his vessel to the Royal James. On July 2nd, 1718, Bonet and his crew captured the merchant sloop Fortune off the coast of Delaware Bay. Um, two days later, they seized the sloop Francis. They took both sloops to the Cape Fear River where they repaired the Royal James. As word reached Charlestown that pirates had gathered at Cape Fear, another pirate threat appeared off the coast of Charlestown. Pirate Charles Vane threatened the colony with hopes of having the same success as Blackbeard. But Governor Johnson dispatched two armed ships and the Henry and the, and the Sea Nymph under the command of Colonel William Rett to capture Vane. But Vane may have been warned of the attempt to capture him and he escaped. Rett then decided to investigate the report of pirates at Cape Fear. On September 26, 1718, Red arrived at Cape Fear, but both, sh both of his ships ran aground briefly and later dropped anchor for the night. Bonet, aka Captain Thomas, sent a small boat downriver to investigate. When the scouting party returned with the word that armed vessels were at the Bonet at the river, Bonet prepared the Royal James for a fight. During the battle on the following day, Rhett's two vessels and Bonet's ship sailed into shallow water and were grounded. During the gun battle, Rhett's men got the upper hand and Bonet surrendered. Rhett was pleasantly surprised to learn that the pirate leader, Captain Thomas, was the Stead Bonet. 
He and 33 of his men who survived the gun battle were taken to Charlestown where the crew was placed in the watch house. Bonnet, however, was considered a gentleman. He was held in the house of Provost Marshal and on October 24, 1718, Bonnet escaped and the Provost Marshal was dismissed under suspicion that he, being a Barbadian, had aided Bonnet's escape. Four days later, while Bonnet was still at large, Bonnet's men were arraigned and all but four were convicted of piracy and sentenced to death. They were hanged November 8th at the tip of the Charlestown Peninsula. Two days before his men were hanged on November 8th, Bonnet was recaptured and placed under heavy guard. Two days after the executions, Bonnet was put to trial and like the majority of his crew, he was convicted and sentenced to hang. The execution was set for December 10th, 1718. Before it was carried out, Bonnet pled for the mercy of his supporters, also asked Governor Johnson to commute his sentence, but the governor was not moved. A frightened and semi-conscious Bonnet went to the gallows with his manacled hands and clutched a faded bouquet of flowers. His body hanged in the chilly December wind for several days before it was cut down and buried beyond the low water mark. Unlike Bonet, Blackbeard was not captured and brought to trial. He was killed off the coast of North Carolina on, December, on November 22, 1718 in a fight with two Royal Navy vessels dispatched from Virginia. Blackbeard's head was severed and taken back to port. His body was dumped into the sea. A plaque stands under the broad branches of an oak tree in White Point Garden at the Charleston Battery, which marks this, the day that Bonet died. Its inscription reads, near this point in the autumn of 1718, Stead Bonet, notorious gentleman pirate, and 29 of his men, captured by Colonel William Rett, met their just desserts, and after a trial and charge, famous in American history by Chief Justice Nicholas Trott, all were buried off White Point Gardens in the marshes beyond the low water mark. Bonet's friends could not speculate as to why he gave up his life of luxury in Barbados for a harrowing life of piracy. Some blamed the mental disorder that followed an unhappy marriage, while others said he was simply searching for adventure. If you like this video, please subscribe right down here. It's the little red button, and don't forget to hit that bell so that you'll know when we do an upload every Sunday at one o'clock. Remember, every trip starts with a step, and well, that step starts with you.